it's, it's basically looking at the potential of you not use, of using non-petrol um, engines or a very transitional uh, minimal petrol engine. And it's a, an engine which fits inside the uh, four wheels of the car, two or four, depending on what, what sort of power source, power outcome you want. But I've seen this on YouTube, and there are amazing potentials, and the cars are actually running where they have um, electric engines actually fitted into the wheel. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, yes, these can be all, could be easily retrofitted onto any car, um, just with a few modifications. So we don't have to waste all that energy of melting down old cars to make a whole new approach to fossil fuel usage in cars uh, workable. Um, and there's this electric engine business. But also in India, there's a, there's a car that's been coming out, I think it was a French design, but the Indians have picked it up and they're producing a car that runs on uh, compressed air with carbon fiber tanks that hold the compressed air. And it was on sale, I believe, for less than 5,000 Australian dollars, which uh, is a pretty amazing thing to be able to get a car running in that community, particularly in India. And I'm concerned about the increase in, in fossil fuel usage by the means of you know, public transport, cars, etc., uh, in, in, in the third world. Particularly, we're looking at the incredible populations of India, Indonesia, in, uh, China, South America, Africa. All those countries need transport. This can, these op alternatives can easily produce them. And so it's important to get behind them, share the information, get, encourage people to, to get into their um, get their thinking caps on about ways to make these things really workable. So that, that's my, my view on that particular car uh, situation. Do you want to chat about it? It's, it's, it's a sort of a given in a way. Fascinating, yeah. Could solve a lot of problems. Um, of course, we do have to consider the vested interests of the uh, petrol industry and the car industry. But they can be overcome, yeah. Sounds great. Great news. Could potentially solve a heap of problems. Alternatives to petrol? Definitely. Um, we were talking the other week about um, water powered cars, um, here electric um, in the wheels, and also um, compressed air. Um, one of the elements which I hadn't thought of before was the um, kind of third world countries. Um, which are sort of developing and coming into the petrol car industry at such an amazing, amazing rate. And um, yeah, for these things to be there and to be encouraged and supported um, is a really great idea, which I haven't contemplated before. Um, if they're coming off of bikes and going into cars, maybe we can assist somehow to fast track into sustainable cars um, so that the petrol industry doesn't um, kind of just take everything that it can in the meantime from them and ruin those environments, pollute those environments even more. So, great, yeah. Eliminating petrochemical car industry problems. And I suppose to take the wind out of the sails of, of the various types of power groups that have been dominating in a very negative way and leading to kind of all kinds of imbalances even in the economic situations that have cropped up in, uh, in the last six months or more. I think it's great for the uh, petrol enthusiasts in the world as well. We can replace the majority of, of purpose commuting, purpose built for commuting um, cars and dramatically reduce the use of, uh, of petrol on, uh, on mass, that could potentially open up the, um, the opportunities for enthusiasts who, who have a, lot, a great passion for fast, loud vehicles which is, we're talking about a, um, a significant element in a lot of people's, people's lives. People do uh, put a lot of energy into motoring and um, make it a priority in their life. 
if we can use that as something that they can put their time and energy into and use on the weekend and, and reduce, reduce that use, um, then these petrol power vehicles will become more of a, a hobby rather than a uh, daily usage. And perhaps, you know. So there's a commuter car which might be electric or air powered and then they have a, their other car that they haven't, haven't trans, uh, changed over from petrol. You can use it on the weekend. And less usage anyway, that's what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, I think the transition is what we have to look at and we, we've got a transition existing from uh, major car companies that have controlled the market um, and they will, as you say, will, want, will be really not too happy to lose their share of everything. Um, but if, it's, if the situation is done in a way that you're actually using the existing energy rather than to try and stop an energy, a bit like Tai Chi, say, for example, you use the energy and, and, and actually have the car companies getting behind the story, knowing that they can be part of the story. And where we saw that the car industry in America was getting some help, I don't know exactly what's gone down lately, but it was getting some help for restructuring. And that word restructuring could be quite um, an important part of the future for, for petrochemical companies, with which the car companies are part of it. And um, so, to help maintain the, the balance and the workability of, of life. Um, because if you start destroying too many jobs and too many people just by saying, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, it doesn't work, it just won't happen. But if it's integrated within the process of how they, they want to um, maintain their, their profit levels, or at least try and keep, keep up with uh, current trends and be ahead of trends, then they'll be, if the Chinese come up with a car, then obviously the other American companies are going to get on board and try and outdo the, the Japanese. And so it will just take, hopefully, we'll have some momentum.